guess what? It's time for another episode of Let's Play Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. We're on episode 12 now, and we're going to finish off the floating gardens and then head over to the next new area in this video. You notice that I started back in the main room of the floating gardens, and if you take the upper left exit in that room and head left twice, that will bring us to the one unexplored room right here. And the reason I left this one unexplored previously was because it connects to the next new area, so I saved it for last. I generally like to explore these big rooms using a figure eight pattern because it allows me to cover the full map without any backtracking, but you can do it however you like. Make sure to explore these top areas though because they almost always contain money bags like that one right there. And that brings an end to the floating gardens. And now we head over into the clock tower. Probably one of the more famous areas of any Castlevania game. And of course there's a cutscene right away. So we meet again. I'm glad to see you're unscathed. Good to see you too. Uh, I got something I want to ask you. Sure. Go ahead. Someone told me that you are to inherit Dracula's powers? I take it that lady from the church told you that, didn't she? It's not true, is it? The term inherit is incorrect. It's true then. I was born on the very day that Dracula was destroyed. So, in short, that means I am Dracula. That can't be right. You've been so kind and friendly to me. That is because I don't consider you a threat to my mission. But, that being said, you have made it this far. I sense a power within you. Do tell me. What kind of a power has woken within you? The power to rule. What? <laughs> you foolish boy. That's impossible. Huh? I can't remain here any longer. I must get to the throne. Your name is Soma, right? You are wrong, Soma. I will not allow you to rule. Jeez. What was that all about? <laughs> I love the way that Graham walks out of the conversation on his tippy toes. Maybe he was a ballerina in another life. <laughs> anyway, moving on. We have the first new enemy of this run, which is the lightning doll. I will get that soul off screen and we'll be back in a moment. Alright, I've got the Lightning Doll Soul, which discharges lightning from its fingertips. It's basically the long-range edition of the Disc Armor Soul. It's going to do multiple hits that are really strong. I'll show you on the enemy down here. There we go. Took that Golem out in two hits, which is not bad at all if you are following along with this. You know they take several hits. Of course, with enemies that have a lightning resistance, like the lightning doll, of course, it's not quite as effective. And we have our next new enemy, the Medusa Head. I'll be back with that. Okay, we've got the Medusa Head, which allows us to hover in midair. And I used the Imp Familiar in order to farm it effectively. And I'll show you this soul now. Basically, you can use your weapon while you just float in midair. That's going to become useful on a future boss fight. And notice this spike pit here? We'll be coming back to that later. Just kind of keep it in your mind. And another cutscene. Hello, Soma. Hey, Yoko. I just ran into Graham. Really? Which way did he go? He was in a rush to get to the throne. Just as I thought. There is something important in the throne room. I'm sorry, Yoko. What? What's wrong with you all of a sudden? He's not who I thought he was. 
He was kind to me only because he thought I was powerless. I see. But his attitude changed suddenly when I told him about my power. Well, in his mind, he thinks everything in this castle is his. So that's the reason? But it's better this way. What is? The fact that he sees you as an enemy now means you're my comrade. Does it? What? You don't want to be by my side? No, that's not what I meant. <laughs> it's so much fun to tease you, darling. But this is not the time to be fooling around. Your presence here has thrown Graham into a panic. This is our chance. What sort of chance? Using his cunning mind, he's been able to evade us up until now. I don't think anyone has ever seen him panic before. I get it. Circumstances right now are making him act this way. That's exactly right. This is an excellent opportunity to trap him. Well, I must be on my way. Ciao, arrivederci! And on to the next area. We'll be coming back to this crumbling bridge later. And our next new enemy is the bomb armor. I will get that soul and be back with it in just a moment. Okay, we've got the bomber armor soul, which allows us to throw bombs. However, they have a delay before they explode, so its effectiveness is sort of minimal. But it is really powerful. And I'll get his item now. Okay, I've got the item, which is Steel Plate. And you'll notice it increases defense by 8 points while only reducing other stats by 1 or 2. So it's a nice compromise. And the wall to the left is actually destructible. If you use the Lightning Soul or any other long-reaching soul, you can get that safely without jumping into the spikes. And that gets us our next new and most useful weapon, which is the Mistletane. And this sword actually has an inherent holy ability because it's carved from a sacred tree, it says. So a lot of enemies in this area and a lot of other areas actually are going to be weak to its power, which means it's going to be doing double damage. And there's our next new enemy, the Harpy. I'll be back with that soul. Okay, I got the Harpy soul, which shoots out razor-like feathers. However, they're really, 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 really weak. So, don't use them. Switch to another soul like the Lightning Doll instead, where you can one-hit things. Oh, we got another steel plate. How lovely. Any doubles or triples or anything like that of an item that you get that you don't plan on using, just sell back to Hammer, and then you can buy more useful things with the money. And that passage on the right-hand side there actually contains an, uh, uh, an item on hard mode, which is Death's Robe. And I'll get the Gremlin Soul. Okay, I've got the Gremlin Soul, which increases luck by 8 points. This will actually help in farming more souls and items in the future, because it's our highest luck upgrade at, the po at this point. But for now, I'll stick with my Headhunter Soul. And you notice we come upon a new Medusa type, which obviously just stoned me. And yeah, anyways, if the head is yellow in hue, it will petrify you, so make sure not to get petrified when you're near spikes, otherwise you're going to take about 140 damage off of each hit, as opposed to like 70 regularly. And now I'm one hitting all these harpies and sirens. Not bad, that's why I used the mistletane in this area. But we'll head back, I'm not ready to go to a new area quite yet. And up here we have the Great Armor, which dies in one hit of lightning. I'll be back with his soul. Okay, we got the Great Armor soul. It says it increases strength by 120%. That's a big fat lie. It only increases it by 20%, or up to 120%, basically. And now I have his item as well, which is the Great Sword. It's pretty strong, and it's got the hammer-like attack. But, it's lack of holy... 
holy ability basically makes it inferior to Mistletane, in my opinion. So I'm going to keep that for now. And finally, up at the top here, in that little ledge above me, is Death Sickle on hard mode. I think we'll call it a video here before the boss. We'll take him on next time. Thanks for sticking around, and hopefully you'll watch the next episode when we take on the boss of Clock Tower. Later!